Well, it's um, 703. I'd like to call the Municipal Buildings Committee to order for Tuesday, April 5th. Uh, we do have a quorum. Unfortunately, I did not put it on the email list. Um, Mr. Weinberg, I will apologize to him for uh, my neglect on that. I should have gone through and made sure of that, but uh, I apologize. Um, one great thing uh, I, we like, we all know about is that um, North Adley Hall is finally sold. It's not part of our town buildings <laughs> after seven plus years. Okay. <laughs> so uh, seven. we have two oh, great ten at least. Oh, fifteen. Go with me. <laughs> I've been here 11 and we said it was there. I've been on slide 423 and I've been after that building for a long time. Well, luckily, there's two fine gentlemen from the town that have purchased it, and uh, certainly they, they should be doing an outstanding job, and uh, we'll have a nice looking building mm -hmm. up in North Hadley soon. Uh, so, the discussion items. The first one is Russell School. Um, this has been certainly toyed around quite a bit. I know that the town administrator asked Gary and I a couple months ago uh, for a meeting in regards to mothballing the building or possibly getting other quotes, asking us what we had for quotes. <clears throat> Unfortunately, and we all know that these days with Inflation and the uh, price of materials um, quotes are almost non-existent. Um, any type of uh, price is totally, in my mind, not worth the paper it's not written on these days because everything's in fluctuation so much. But we can get an idea what things would cost in order to do something, possibly put a high-end price on it and hope for the best. So, um, Carolyn did ask us what we had for old prices, um, and as you know, if we did a total renovation of the entire building for town uses, it could be well above $12 million. It could be all the way up to $21 million, depending on how extensive our work uh, was and uh, so the question was we did have a list of what we felt needed to be mothballed that was put together by our uh, architect that we have uh, he went through some of the old pricing that he had put together and pulled out items that he felt that should be included to mothball the building. And that was given over, but again, it, it's a price that we don't know what today's escalation would, would well, come to. Do you have a, a guesstimate, or may I just move closer? Uh, do you have a guesstimate, like are we talking? Um, well, you've got a quote on the middle of the roof. Was, yeah, uh, one of the things we knew that we needed to do room. was get some, an update on a roof. And after some discussion, the material cost to go to a metal roof and that would mimic what we have on all the other buildings wouldn't escalate that price too much because most of the price that we would see was based on the mere fact that it's, it's such a tall building and the problem with the elevations of it and the steepness of it. Uh, that price came out to $250,000 to do a metal roof. To strip it, they put a complete zoom over there. Yeah, that, that sounds, sounds like a bargain. You said it was more than that. But you said it was like over 350. No. You sure? And that and that seems fair. Because the the, the fire station was you know, he was, was almost two hundred and we did that. 
Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's a huge roof. The, the Russell School building has a strange curve at the bottom. He can do it. He's done it before. Yeah, he yeah, said he has a, a, a bender on the thing. Yeah. You know, they have to crimp it like they do yeah. on a car metal. But yeah, I would say that you know anywhere around three hundred thousand is probably going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, if it's metal, it's definitely worth it. If you go to put an asphalt roof on it just to patch it and mothball it. And you're it's not, it's, it's, it, yeah, it's not worth the, the you know, I even get the lifespan on it yeah. these days. Well, I guess the question is, how long are we planning to mothball it for? Because well, you know, there's you know, that's a million dollar question. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Yeah. well that's, I want to put it up for sale or lease and get it out of our hands. Yeah. I'm tired of being a custodian to all these buildings that we need. Well, we have less the issues we haven't been a custodian to the building. That's true. It's Absolutely true. So, you know, the issue is, you know, we need to protect it because it's part of the town's history that is, you know. Okay, I, I got a question on that. And it's been by, and it's, how did you vote on that when it first of all came up on that building? <laughs> what do you mean? To I save it or build a new school? Remember, we, we, the state was going to give us, what was about 26 years ago now we built the school? The state was going to give us. We're around for that vote. We're, you lived in town your whole life? 26 years ago? Yeah, we built the new elementary school. I wasn't mm -hmm. in town. I was, I was living on the gate 26 years oh, ago. So the state was going to give us, I think, was it 70%, 60%? Yeah. You know, to, yeah, 70%. 70% to fix both buildings. And the town voted, and it was fairly unanimous that they did not want to fix them, they wanted a new school, they weren't worth fixing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, and that's when we get, when we get the school. school. Mm -hmm. Well, the state will fix it. As well, a school, we'll certainly it's well. not, you know, as a school, no, you, it, you know, you can't really use it as a school. If you did, it would be, you know, one or two rooms at the most. Right. But to save it as a piece, you know, to mothball it as a piece of our town's history would be, you know, it, you know we spent $20 million on these three new buildings. Right. So if we could spend a single, a single million to save the building for a future generation to fix it up. So here's my problem. Any money we spend on that is not going to any other buildings. Mm -hmm. We've got, it's in, we're using CPA money for some of this, which is good and we paid for it and it's free money. But we also have other buildings that are, I think, being used and in more need of some CPA money, as in the town hall, the columns we're going to talk about. Once they paint those columns, the rest of that town hall is going to look like a good one. Yeah. We, and we, a good one. We We've got the first we section. We might need more money to get that done in the second part of it. No, we get to that part of the meeting. I would, you know, town hall needs paying already. Right. The whole thing. Bad. The highway department needs paying along with the trailers that they're working on. Right. So to me, those should be capital. I, I agree. Capital. I agree that there is work to be done in a lot of places, and. We kind of need an answer, I think. Um, how long are we going to mothball? Are we going to mothball it and let it sit there for 20 years? It's going to look like crap anyway. It's going to deteriorate. Yeah, I heard it. If it isn't used, it looks like heck. And nothing's getting cheap. Yeah, so. What is included in the term mothball? Well, that's another thing. That, I personally that's think. That's a big gamut. You know, yeah. everybody's saying put a roof on it. Yes, that's obviously we need a roof. But if we put a roof on it and one of the porticles falls off and the whole side of the building is exposed, all right, well, we should have had somebody tell us what they suggest to mothball and how much to do it the right way. Otherwise, we're kind of taking a gamble on. Let me, okay. Before COVID hit, right when COVID hit, we were tasked with coming up with pricing several different pricing the select board wanted. One was how much would ultimate cost if we fixed it up, how much if we could partner up with somebody and we had a subcommittee to look at that, uh, what might be the cost incurred on that. We went all the way down to how much would it cost to demolish the building. So we were asked to bring up those pricing. We were we had pricing for everything. We were waiting for the subcommittee to come back with some type of recommendation if they felt that there was a possibility of partnering with somebody. COVID had that that committee disbanded. We had and everything was 
put on hold. So a year goes by, what are we doing with Russell School? So we started looking at it a little bit more. Now, essentially, the, the thought was to get some pricing out to, to the residents so they had an idea of what they were going to vote on. <clears throat> And the problem that we were faced with is we had old numbers. And the only way we could get new numbers was to put some money towards a professional to reassess those numbers. We had nothing in the pot to, to go forward with that. So we were basically out in the cold on this whole thing and trying to figure out what to do. Is it fair to just go out and, and solicit the people and say, hey, what do you want to do with the building? Because the biggest question is everybody's going to ask, how much is it going to cost? Mm -hmm. I, so I we can ask that question without dollar figures and each question. Numbers. Because that, we had a thing years ago that came out. Um, you know, I think the main question is, is not whether or not how much it's going to cost, it's whether or not the younger generation actually wants to keep that building because if you do a random um, questioning of middle-aged people, they don't really care about these old buildings. It's the people that are in their 60s, 70s, thinks that it's important to you know keep the preserve. nature, preserve the buildings. It is not the younger generation right now. No, they don't want to spend the money. They don't want their taxes going up. And that's the bottom line if you're if going to we, look at everything. If we don't have a price, a lot of people say, yeah, I'd like to save that right. money. Because I would like to save it. But do I want $20 million going on to my tax rate? Exactly. Absolutely not. Especially when we don't really have a use for it as a town. Right. And I was the one that said we should always keep the property and tear the building down. I kind of changed my mind. I'm going to go with Joyce now on this. If, if I think we should you either get rid of the building or you pass it off to somebody and let somebody else take care of it. I don't think I the town should be kicking any more money until we've got well, other buildings. I mean, now there's talk about picking up another one here next to the library, possibly. But my thought is we shouldn't ever lose that piece of property. Because right, I don't want to lose the, the property. The property is very the land good. is worth a lot. So, so you can put too. historic restrictions on it and, and do it the same way that we did North Adley Hall. If we want to maintain the center of town as it is, I mean, you can sell a building with some type of restrictions on I it. I understand. But, but they can get a better price on fixing that than we can we as a town. I, we I all agree. know that. I mean, I've done enough buildings in yeah, town to school and everything. Yeah. But my thought is we cannot, in 50 or 100 years, Will the town eat that piece of property? Forget about the building, the property. You know, are we um, kind of screwing over the next generation by letting that piece of property be sold to? Well, that, that kind of came up today when we were talking with Larry. He asked about the parking lot that we had mm -hmm. started to lay out in front of there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's definitely an overflow parking lot for the town hall. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it's bad because you're backing out onto Route 9 in that intersection. Sooner or later, somebody's going to get clogged. Yeah, yeah, actually, we thought about that parking lot over there because we wanted to have some use for the Goodwin Memorial Library. Right, that was which, also that. according to the planning board right. and whatever, you can't use spots. the senior center for overflow for the Goodwin Memorial. I agree. So that was one reason why David. Children actually did right. Threw up, that threw up plans for the. the yeah, and we did get some pricing on it. And we yeah. should. I still say we should do that. We, Whether we get rid of the building, or we tear it down, or whatever. But that parking lot should be done. Now I noticed now we have another business on the other side of the church, and there's some people parking there and walking across. Mm -hmm. Well, so here we are, after all these years, and we haven't really gotten any place. I personally, I don't think this committee can come up with some type of scenario with all these prices at this point without a professional consultant. And I, I'm going to look to the select board and say, what do you want from us? We can't keep on going around and around and around. We've done this three times already. Mm -hmm. 
and for whatever reason has been squashed. I think maybe it's just time, maybe the select board can say, hey, let's get a num all of us committees together and say, we're not going to leave this room until this is the decision we're going to go with. And let's do it. Because none of us want to go seven years. Do we, like we have enough time deal. to put on the agenda for town meeting a questionnaire as we did with the elementary school? And That's what the right select board wants. The warrant's closed. Warrant's closed. The warrant's closed. The warrant's closed. We can open the warrant anytime. And, and, you know, and, and put something on you know, there. Like Dave says, if we don't throw some numbers that are very realistic. We're not putting on numbers on the warrant. What we're doing is, is asking at a reasonable time or to have at least maybe something made up where we would have a questionnaire for people to, to, to do. And, and what we could do is like, say, you know, based on old numbers, these are the percentages. If you, we know that probably it would be 150,000. We'll come up with a legitimate number on how to, how much it would cost to demolish it. It's another 100% more to do this and 4,000% to, to renovate the building. Yeah. We could give them a scenario, maybe, but mm -hmm. other than that, the way the I think we're right now, and we don't want to attempt to guess that. Well, but there's not much we can do anymore. Well, we don't have. I guess I. The ability to do anything. Isn't, wouldn't it be an option to document the building the way it is, take it down, and when you are building there, have it built to look just like it? We certainly can do things like For that. For a lot less money. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. I, that's something I agree with. Yeah. yeah that's good. We, can, we can't make that building handicap accessible. We can't. Well, because the back side of that, and, and I was on the school committee at the time that we looked at this yeah, building, that's where and they had the architect from Greenfield. Greenfield, and the back side of that, when they were measuring it, it's dropping. Yes, so it's, yes. not, it's not even stable ground on that back side that faces the top of the academy. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that was, back, that was back then, 20, Remember 30 that? years ago, when we were going to build the elementary school. I mean, I was all there scenario. today in the port call on facing the town hall, mm -hmm. that was dropping even more. Yes. You know, so, so it's not even feasible for a stable building at this point. I think we're at the point it's, it's almost unstable. Mm -hmm. So that, that brings me back to, you know, the metal roof versus putting the patch on it. But I agree with Dan, he's been saying this for a year and in your email a month ago, that we got this $9,000 to pass the roof, and probably that would only take care of a one small side. portion of it. One side. But if you got that money, why aren't we using that instead of letting water come in? Patch up the biggest holes, and we got to, to me, it's so foolish to put on a two hundred thousand dollar metal roof, and then three, four, five years down the road, to let it sit there and then tear it down like Booker School did. You know, and how many well, taxpayers are going to say, "How stupid can you guys be?" Right, but we did. But we did that to Hooker School. We had people in it was no place. No I understand. Place I understand. But you, yeah, you're right. That building we don't have a use for. It. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, the other part is the metal roof was put on before the building committee was was formed. This building. Committee. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just it saying. It was because, because, the, seniors, it was because yeah. the wall was leaking all the way down to yeah. the cellar and the. It, the sun it, goes we long. had some serious leakage in there. Well, there's some serious leakage across the school. Not, I mean, nothing like, nothing, nothing like, like you had school. water pouring down the wall mm -hmm. well, and you know, flooding the stairwell. It was so bad. You know, if that's the case, it certainly, you know, I, I'll, I would, I'd be willing to wager that the majority of town would say, yes, let's put a roof on it and, and because that's the first step of mothballing it. And it's mothballing the building, not mothballing the project. You know, you need to save the building. Uh, I still wouldn't spend any money unless we have an architect tell us what, what needs to be done to mothball a building. Well, I don't even know why we're personally talking about mothballing the building. I personally would tear it down, put another building up there that would be usable, that would be a, a, a new one. Well, that, that's part of our problem. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, a historic, a historic part of this town, historic 
monument of this town. It's, it's an iconic structure. It's very beautiful. I mean, it, it is, but it's it, not. It's not worth anything right now, Dan. I mean, it's falling down. It, it's getting to it's the point that it's going to be dangerous. It is. It, it, it right. could. You know, there's no roof put on it, so I'm it, 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 move it. I'm, I just, I just think that you know, um, you know, it, it, in in lieu of a hasty decision, the select board has over and over put this project off again and again to well, the point where we've had other it's, buildings. It's, and now, actually, what we're really focusing on is not the Russell School. We want to get done with Goodwin, which is a feasible, usable building. That well, they're both, do. they're both usable. Well, no. Goodwin is more usable than Russell. I think they're about the same. They're both about oh, no. the same vintage. Mm -hmm. So, no. the, you know, we, we put, a, like I said, a lot of effort into the center of town. These buildings are on this one lot to keep the campus feel, to make sure the town so the stays in the center of town. Goodwin has been renovated a lot more. The Goodwin has been kept up. I'm not sure why we have this feeling towards Russell School. I don't know whatever happened at Russell School that makes people not like this building. I didn't even go there, so don't put that on. I did. Well, I didn't. And my husband went there, and he says take it down. My kids went there. Okay. So we don't need to go that route tonight. No, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not saying. Everybody uh, has their own feeling yeah, about it. Right. So, I, don't, I just, I, I just feel do. that I don't. Let's, I don't feel that too much I, other stuff that we need to deal with. All right. We're, we've been hashing this forever. I'd like to make a motion to the committee that we ask the select board to get a date and time for the select board members, whoever wishes to be part of this, us, planning board, who, whoever wants to be part of this, building commissioner, maybe even the, the chiefs, to have a sit down meeting and let's get some strategy on how we're going to face this building. Because we have been talking like this for years and nothing has been done. And it deteriorated at the same rate that North Hadley Hall. It's exactly right. And we cannot let that happen again. We have to make a fundamental decision on what to do with it and just go for it. Because another seven years, it won't it's, last. it's not going to last. It will not last. So, and it took us seven years on the on the North Hadley Hall. And I'm proud of the fact that we did get these other buildings up. You know, I mean, I'm not against new development, new buildings. My new motion is to request the select board to set a date and time and decide on who should be part of this meeting and make a fundamental decision on how to approach the building. I think you're board. saying like this board and the select board and historic commission somebody else or Whoever the select board believes I, should be part of it. I think historic. Well, I'd like to have a second to that, so we can. Well, I think I don't know about the select board, but are you going? I mean, I'm sure a lot of people at that meeting that you just mentioned, they're going to want some hard numbers if we're going to be footing the bill for them. Well, he said set a date, so there's time to set a date that will give you time to get numbers. Not to mention, the well, select like, board's going to have new numbers too. But we need some money to get some new numbers. That's we're not going to get new numbers, not for free. We have ideas. And it might be that it comes out of the meeting that we just put it up to a vote to the presidents. I don't know. But, but we gotta we all have to be on the same page somehow. But before anybody gives you a, a second on that, can we back up a little bit? What do we have? Nine thousand dollars CPA money for eight. Eight thousand. Eight thousand. Gary, I'll go to you. Is this is that 8,000 going to go and keep the water out of the building? No. 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 The last, the, when we first appropriated that, that was what we spent to have the whole roof done once. The cost had gone up so much that it would patch maybe the south side. And why that didn't get done when it was voted on several years ago, I have no idea. I was told to hold off. Would the $8,000 take care of uh, paying an architect to give us the numbers? Yes. Is it CPA money? But it's slated specifically for roof repair. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't know if we could use that money that way. But um, based on on past practice, I would say no. 
So what it comes down to is we, you know, I've been on this uh, committee for maybe three years now, and we did a couple of studies, and, or updated the studies. You know, we keep throwing money into studies. Can't we just say, okay, this, these are all the last numbers that Larry gave us. So I'm saying. Let's just add on, everybody knows the building trades went up, whatever, 30%. Draw on 35 percent because they're going to go up some more. Well, let's use those numbers you have. That's fine. That's because what you're saying. The 35 yeah. percent added. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if that's a true number on All percentage, right. but Tim would probably know, or, or <laughs> we could ask Tom Quinlan to let him out of the committee come up with a number, mm -hmm. and um, just use a number like that. And it's an estimate, anyways, because by time we ever passed anything to get funding to it, anything, it's going to be 50 percent. You know? We had we had uh, Larry redo the numbers from the DRA report. He updated those and added on a certain percentage, you know, for cost escalations into the next couple of years. And those numbers were current as of the sub the Russell School subcommittee uh, just when we went into quarantine. Two years ago. So now they're probably a little out of whack. We probably need to add a little more. That's probably 30 percent. That's not so the, the, All those studies, like you said, we've done study after study. We have, you know, the DRA report, the old Mohawk report. You could have patched the roof by now. With could have patched the roof by the, I mean, and. But that's something if we all got together and we all agree that that's what to do, let's do it. Yeah, I'll bring that back tomorrow. I appreciate it. I so, uh, do I, I have a second? So I'll, I'll, can, I'll second it. Yeah. Well, I'd add that, that the interested parties should be, you know, historic and CPA yeah. as well. Well, whatever that's what you want. Right. Look, right. Look, well, so I'll take that back to them. Absolutely. Make, would it make sense? And we have those numbers, and we can present those, and we'll say, and here's the 35% increase, which I think is a we valid more, number right uh, now. Building inspector. And even though that I've seen some well over 50% increases. But let's just go, this is what we have for estimates. It says spending a whole ton of more money. I'm trying to get these things more accurate, which is going to be out. Nearly possible. So, what's, do you, you have your second? Great, yeah, we have a second. I agree. Okay, yeah, there we go. I'm in favor of that. You take the notes, everybody? Yeah. All right, so that's what we're going to do. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to say something quick on Russell School on, before we go to the next subject? Next subject. Good. Thank you. Um, good one. So, um, where do we stand on good one? We did have a meeting today with uh, Larry Tuttle, Architects Insight, who was our architect in house consultant. Okay. Um, where are we right now? Uh, we have almost the entire package ready to go out for bid. The only thing left that he did not have in hand, and I have the rest of the stuff in, in my truck right now, is the final set, stamp set of mechanicals. Which he has, but he doesn't have, didn't have them with him. He didn't have them with him. So is this okay. new, so, completely new mechanical system, sir? So yes, uh, so uh, okay. Let's let's um, just go back and say what phase one and phase two is. Phase one was to renovate the existing building. Essentially, the majority of that work is for electrical. What we found in the building, and we've gone through a couple phases of this, is a lot of knob and tube that's still. Uh, live, and we found a lot of issues with uh, the the circuit box and everything undersized, out of um, code, and everything else. So we had to go back, and get it all reworked, come up with new numbers, and figure out what we needed to um, redo good with it. Also with Phase one work within the building, phase two was going to be addition off the back side, the north side, to have new a new elevator, a, an elevator, new stairs, and new accessible bathrooms. 
and, and because we were we have voted to go forward with phase two architecturally, phase one work has some of that requirement of phase two built into it. So what we did was we made the panel for phase one big enough. Correct. So we don't have to accommodate what we need. Okay. Mechanicals. All reworked. Uh, they're not all new. They, it's all new. Oh, well, it's uh, mechanical. The drawing is new, but he, they're leaving the furnace. There are what? There are two splits. They plan on adding, I think, two or three more splits. Yeah, mini splits. Is but in, in order now? for TV five is in there now. In order for the mechanical engineer to design everything, he sort of had to go into phase two to make sure that. Everything was yeah. compatible. Yeah, in, in but as far as one phase one, they're going to add a few things. So in order to do yeah, electrical, good. we and one of the big thing issues that has, has happened with Goodwin over the years was we weren't using the second floor a lot, only because that ceiling on the first floor was coming down. It's not attached to the floor joists. So, the so that whole so the whole ceiling is going to come down, so we can. Rework uh, all the alarm work, uh, wiring and all everything else, new lighting and whatnot. We, do we have to put a sprinkler system in? No, it's too small. It doesn't need a sprinkler system. Uh, one of the things we also decided to do was we're going to put a temporary bathroom in on the, the first, first floor, floor I mean, that's accessible. Down. So when the Planning board is utilizing that first or, floor for meeting or rooms and rec. and park and rec. They have an accessible bathroom to use. Okay, until we get into phase two and the new bathrooms will be into phase. And we made it in such a way that it can be removed quite easily. Okay, and it's not disturbing any of the historical significance of the island. Yeah, I, I remember that. Now, okay, so we we got some money for all this planning. Architectural and all that, right? The drawings. Uh, there's no money to actually do the project, or is it? Well, yes. Yeah, there's money to do the project. Unfortunately, what has happened is that the money um, that we had set aside for um, the architect and the engineers to do phase one was unfortunately removed out of the budget, and we didn't have it. But what we decided to do was use, we have 200 and Almost two hundred fifty thousand, two thirty, two thirty something, something like that. for the for the construction phase. So we've taken some of that m money just to finish up the architectural portion of it. We know right now that we're not going to have enough money to do everything that was stated in phase one. And one of the things that most likely is not going to happen right now in phase one is on the second floor we were going to fix the ceiling, it's all cracked and, and whatnot, and fix some of the issues with the walls. That's not going to happen. I think we have to be realistic. Even though that, that was something that we thought we were a, able to do because the prices have gone up, we really hope that we'll have enough money to do what we really ha actually have to do on phase one is, is the electrical. Well, do we have, um not the tube wiring very up into that ceiling that's cracked on the second floor. Or? It's it, it's open. There's no it's, insulation yeah, because you we can't can get to that. To stop it. Yeah, and luckily we can get into the attic. What, what that. about uh, insulating the attic? Are we going to be able to insulate? It could there? very well be. We have uh, phase one. We won't have won't have enough money to do it all. So n phase two is probably going to be bumped up a bit. Or we have, so, can ask CPA for some more money. Yeah, we'll have to go to CPA. So this money more. came from CPA. Right? Yes. Okay. So the money is there, and we won't be able to do as much as we planned. Well, phase correct. one. But um, when is all that? So Larry's drawing up all the paperwork to put out the bid. And we hope to give it to. Um, I told Carol today that probably next week we will next be week. giving her all the all the documents. They can put the front end stuff to it. Yeah, because she has to weeks. do that procurement. Yeah, thing. and then give it back to 
Cost review. review. That's, that's one problem. thing we want to do this time, so we don't get into the he problem that we did before. Yeah. He's going to get to really us this week. Like Larry next, week, too. next week, we'll give it to Just them. Give it a fast couple weeks for them, them to put make their sure stuff all the it, Send it back to Larry and us to review and make sure everything's in there, and they can go out to bid. So really, we're talking about two, two, two months. Two months, we should be able to get that. So you'll get that to Carolyn next week. Correct. Yeah. So we should be able to get that quickly. Yeah. So what what preparation has been done over there to you know to to prepare for this? Has, has any nothing. work been done? No. Nothing. Everything's still there. There's nothing's been opened up. No. Taken apart. No. PV five is in there. PV five is in there. Um, mm -hmm. There's some stuff upstairs. Uh, the Hopkins Fund is going to be using it for until mm -hmm. the construction starts. So can we get more CPA money so we can do the full you have to put phase in a one? You have to put in a request to CPA. But are we too late to get by this yes. town meeting? Well, our thought was... Yeah. 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 He had the numbers and he had two yeah. X. Yeah, after we get the numbers on the bid, let's see where we are. Okay. And but, then we can... Uh, but it still has up. to go to town, yeah. town meeting, so right. maybe fall. Fall. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because... Uh, yeah, and I, would, I would like to see the whole thing get... You know, yeah, 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 continue yeah. with it and bust up. See, on that, first, especially when you're in the middle of it. And I know Dan doesn't want to hear this, but this is a, a building that is used for, immediate use for at least. Absolutely. So I'm more in favor to put money in here and as a taxpayer. Well, when we voted as a committee that that was the case. Yes. And the great thing is it's all CPA money that we've been using. Yeah. So it's all of our tax dollars. Yeah, it's yeah, so tax dollars. Like yeah, it's tax dollars well, that we are yeah, paying. Yeah, yeah, sorry, more. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, so I, you know, I, I'd like to, I'd like to see the whole thing done in one shot too. But you know, well, it's, like I said, it's you know, I asked Larry today, do you think we're in the ballpark? He goes, I don't know. The way things are going now, I don't know. And it depends on, you know, the things are starting. They're saying it's going to start dropping. I, I haven't seen it yet, but yeah. maybe it will. Well, like you said, I think in the fall we'll be able to go to get phase two started. We got the twenty-five thousand dollars to design it. We, we can do that quickly. Yeah, we're talking about finishing phase one to make sure everything is yeah. done. Yeah, so we, that's the strategy. Let's see where the bids come in and figure out what we should be doing and throwing, maybe throwing some of phase one over into phase two or do that a, a separately and get some more money for phase one, get that. Done. But I think we, we do have the ability to even possibly even go out to bid in, in, in the phase which and have some phase good one. estimates for phase, for phase two. 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 Okay, so on phase one, do you feel that the concrete's going to be poured and we were able to close it in for the winter and get this going? No, that's not phase one. That's not phase one. No. We, wasn't the back? We were going to do that. We didn't do it. Oh, that came out. Yeah, we took, we no, took that we out. You don't want to put the foundation in if nobody's going to vote for the building on top. Yeah. So there was there was several reasons why we said okay. We did. We did so, plan. so phase one's everything inside. Yeah. Okay. And that will happen this fall or winter. At the latest. Well, it's going to be summer. Let's put it out to bid and. Okay. Do it summer. summer and have it done. Okay. Yeah, we'll see what the prices yeah. are. We what might need some. What time do you think it will take to finish phase one? Assuming there's no major problem. I think it's sometime in, in mid-fall we'll have it done. Because you're much better off going back to town meeting asking for more if you have something to show. Yeah, we'll have a lot to show. But it, it was slowing down a little bit. Um, logistically, TV5 isn't there now. Are they going to have to move out for phase one? No. No. They can stay there for phase one. Yes. It doesn't have any effect with no. the knob and tube wiring and having to remove that. And we'll be able to get I talked to Drew yesterday or the other day and he said that, you know, he goes, well, what's the story? Are you going to like shut the power off the whole time they're doing this? I said, no. You know, I said, you know, obviously you might be down a day or two when they sneak the big stuff through. Right. He goes, all right, we because can live all, with that. all these buildings are supposed to be getting the fiber optic. So that building they was, had we put fiber optic in there for yeah, them to move right, there. It was right, a special, right. and it cost us a lot of money yeah, to do it. Yes. Yeah. So uh, uh, downtime could be m m and no longer than three days for uh, right. TV but five. Logistically, yeah. though, well, doesn't that, no, no, no. Be up line. no. As far as like inside of the second floor, there's not you know unless 
the ceiling's well, not going to come down right now, I don't think. Just because I, you know, I'm thinking about, do, do we need to, is that another part of the budget? But as long as he doesn't need to go anywhere. No, he's not going to relocate. He's going to no. be there. The stuff that's up there can stay right now. The first and second floor are basically yes. vacant. So Very we, low so impact. So reality in going back tomorrow and telling them you've got $226,000 in your budget that's left for phase one. Yes. $25,000 will go to the architect out of that, correct? No. No, so that's well, separate. We have yeah, There is some money going to the architect, not that much. The 25000 that he's talking about is the money for the architect. For that's a different two, article. A different, okay. a different set of them. And some of that they've used because, like you said, you wanted to design them together, so part of it, yeah. you know, you're not, yeah. Okay. So we'll have something to show out of that $200,000 of getting something done. We're, yeah. Before yes. the fall, before we need to submit something to CPA, because we certainly want to get that in on time. Absolutely. Uh, well, we should know in a couple of months what we're looking yeah. at. Yeah, we'll have a good idea in two months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it would be good to get that and finish it. I'm, like you said, mm -hmm. once you start, it's good to finish something. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, you know, we were hoping that we would have had everything to you in October, mm -hmm. but it just it everything got bogged down, mm -hmm. and it's just the way things are these days. And um, yeah, you're lucky if you can get somebody to call you back now for a quote. Yeah. So we we have. I think we have. I'm right back. <laughs> They're either too busy or they can't sadly they've asked for 20 calls. Is, it, is there any more discussion that anybody want to talk about Goodwin? I think we're in really good shape with Goodwin right now. No, yeah. I, I'd just like to see it actually yeah. move along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the, the project came to a, like a, a dead stop when COVID hit, and that's understandable. But it's good to hear that it's it's going forward. Uh, the the um, you know okay. the trustees did a great job keeping that building vertical and keeping it in good shape for a long time. Oh, yes. They handed well, over the started. deed, and I feel bad that they, they weren't handed a deed to the new building. Because now, the, you know, the, the town who has destroyed the North Hadley Hall and the Russell School is in charge of the new building. Well, well, the trustees should have their own deed, but it's well, not right. of the bridge. Put it this way, it just takes money to keep them up, you know. Oh, that's it, just money. All right, is the next Terry item on the is uh, town hall columns, painting of the town hall columns. That is a bit of a fiasco. Um, I'm going to let Gary, because he had another one today. Money for that. Okay, well, you haven't been here in a while, so we're going back. It went out to bid. I, sh I should have brought the paperwork in. There was a set of specs drawn up by Larry that were probably six, okay, six, six or seven pages, pages both sides. Mm -hmm. um, where to get faster, where to buy the wood, what type of glue, how to scrape, methods of doing everything, where to buy stuff, all this stuff. And there was also a picture of the front of the town hall that said paint here, prime there, do this, do that. When the bids came back, we, ne we never saw the bids before they went out. When they came back, we asked to see them and we asked to review the credits of the people that were bidding. We never got to. So they awarded it. It got six months, they were sending it to the wrong email of the company that got the bid. They finally got the bid and Larry said, I don't think this company really can, is capable, but all right, they've got the bid. So Larry started dealing on them and of course then it was uh, October, so we couldn't paint. So we all met, got together, postponed the job due to weather said we'd take it back up in the spring. Larry came to us and said, I don't know, he says, they've got a different guy now working for him, and he, the guy seems to think it's just a paint job. He goes, it's not a reconstruction job, something's gone. He goes, I don't know, I don't know what this guy, maybe the other guy didn't tell him or something. I said, well, let me double check on that. So I went to the town hall, and I got the copies of all the stuff, and asked what was sent. And what came back was the picture of the town hall and where to paint. So I called the other guy that bid because he was the guy that built the North Station. Mm -hmm. North Station, so I, I called the guy to say, anybody in your company, do you know anything about this job? Can you send me what was sent to you? Figuring maybe mm -hmm. this guy did the actual job and they both bid the same thing. It was just painting and scraping. Mm -hmm. So the whole meat and potatoes never got sent. None of those facts were sent out. 
So that's why the bid was. So at that point, it was. we had to call the lawyer because you can't do a, a change order because it's it's as much as the bid. You can you know it's got to be a certain amount. So he said, what you basically got to do is tell this guy you now have a paint job, and we're going to have to go out to bid and fix the rest of it. That's why we asked CPA for more money. Then um, we got the, the money, and so he's been dealing with this guy, saying, look, you know, give us your, you know, your uh, statement of breakdown of what you're going to charge for everything. And he's going, all right, well, now you're just going to be painting. You're not going to be priming or prepping. So you're gonna to have to knock some off. The guy's going, yeah, well, I know I bid on this, it's gonna be another year or two, so you owe me some more money for doing the stuff, stuff's gone up. That was about a year ago when he talked to him. So now we're getting ready to go forward this spring, and he's been emailing him and emailing him, and the guy's not responded. Since January. He's got co uh, copies of the emails. So I brought those to Carol today, and I said, you know, here's, here's what you know, we've been doing. You know, he's got all his emails. He wants to know, should the town send a letter? Should the lawyer send a letter? How do you want to proceed with this? Basically telling these people, you haven't responded to us. We're, the, we're not going to give you the contract and we'll go back out with the contract the way it should have been instead of going back out to bid for just doing the rebuilding. This is absolutely nothing back from this guy for over six months. It's still not. Calls, emails, everything, and we, there's nothing. I think there's got to be a point that the town has a legitimate to to cancel the entire project. Yeah, because we, we can't get. We should check with the lawyer before. Yeah, she. So I gave her the information. I told her, you know, if you need some more from me, if you need, you know, some more information from Larry or whatever, you know, his records or whatever, um, and we'll and we'll go from there. So that's she's working on that. Uh, once we find out what they suggest, the right way of stopping that is all of the stuff is ready to go out again. If they do say they're going to do it, Larry just has to pull out that part and readjust it, but we've also got to kind of negotiate with them on, you know, look at your schedule of you know, values here is, mm -hmm. you know, you put, you know, $9,000 for prepping and you're not going to be doing that. So yeah, we'll give you a little more for paint and primer, but. Mm -hmm. So um, if we can get out of the contract, be the best that would be the best thing because yeah. now you know you don't get it to no boy i'm not guaranteeing the paint because i didn't prep it and i'm not going to guarantee my workers i'm not paying it exactly but um like joyce said you got to check for the attorney to right you got to make sure it's legal you'll be paying extra again especially where he's not <laughs> yeah. seeing the foul pattern it's not going really broke <laughs> saving money <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't trust with the lawyers no so chances of it getting painted this summer are pretty ill. No, 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 no. <laughs> the way things are, yeah. <laughs> unfortunately. Well, so can I bring up the whole condition of the town hall? Given how everything takes so long to get done, the whole building is peeling all the way around. Oh, when you um, get those white columns painted, you are going to really notice what the rest of the thing looks like. So I don't know if it should be this committee or how, um, we should be looking at um, painting or some alternative to painting. You know, um, a different material on it. Well, that's what this committee's for: is to give recommendations to the select board. And that you you said something I was going to say. But right. we think about should we not just do the columns, and it's getting to the point that we should maybe do the entire. Well, the columns thing. are kind of a separate thing because that's all. I mean, I was. Scott and I, after we left today, and I'm bouncing on some of those, and then, I mean, you could, if you throw a baseball at it, it's going to sound it right back to you, because some of those insides are not connected at all. I mean, you just touch them, and those staves are getting... But, you, you that's don't know big, how it, that's going to turn out with what the attorney says. That could be six months or a year before you have a, an agreement. Um, but in the meantime... Well, I think once the attorney it, says, either the guy in or out, we're going to go out the bit. That should happen yeah. within the next month. Well, yeah. Good luck. Because, uh, you know, how attorneys go, and then unless the other guy signs off, then you'd be paying him to do nothing and walk well, away. So, well, uh, here's here's our dilemma right now with this committee. Is we, we luckily, this, the residents of this town gave us $50,000 a number of years ago for professional consultant to help us write up specs and things like that. 
and we were very successful in going through. We made that money quite last a bit eight or nine years yeah. and several projects, not just the Goodman and the Town Hall. They did the, gone through the boilers at the police station, yeah. the HVAC yeah. systems at the police yeah. station, yeah. our metal roofs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All know, that has been done on that 50000 We have no money left. And we, we have no way of writing specs. Well, we have a new liaison, so... We need money. <laughs> so, I Carol, guess Carol we, likes to we go go back. ask a contractor and just use their specs. I, I First of all, it's illegal unless they say they will, yeah. but you know, if you... I mean, you know yourself. There's several contractors out there you trust to you know build your house, and if you ask the wrong one, well, exactly. But you know, we know a good contractor that could come up and give us all kinds of ideas. Uh, that town hall look really nice, and almost never have to paint it again. Um, you know, we, you could get, and maybe they, a lot of these guys aren't going to come and blow the time because they're all busy. But the right guys can tell you that. Well, we we, we actually it. did that several, yeah. well, the last time that the town hall got painted is that we had several options for us to choose, and one of them, we rounded and rounded on that one, too, about whether to paint it, Put to side it, to do yeah. vinyl siding, I mean, to do this other type of siding on there. The problem is, is that you've got Route 9, and you've got the salt and all the crap that comes when they plow and they do the salting, and mm -hmm. now you've got the... Uh, the chlorine chemicals exactly. there, you know, so it's it's not not kind to those buildings at all. And, and the other thing is part well, of redoing that building is we need to get rid of all those wires and all that crap that everybody's hanging off of that. It's building. a serious issue. It, it just looks horrible, you know. Um, and granted, it needs to come into the building, but let's put it in a chase or something so we don't look like a bunch of monkeys just throwing things on a building all the time. You know, it's our center of talent. Which wires are you talking about? Power goes on, in. on the north side of the building, it's like a million cable lines and telephone and all kinds oh, of things. Oh, that's because they, yeah, they run just, all the but fiber optic. You just can't let way. these companies come in and just string just stuff and, and slop it around. Just it's still it. underground. Well, however, but it shouldn't be visible or it should be in a conduit and painted the same mm -hmm. color of the building, mm -hmm. you know, to make it look nice. And yeah, I mean, now today I was looking, part of the problem too with that is. You know, that building really has minimal insulation, no vapor barrier, and latex paint peels off. You know, they wanted to do vinyl and they wanted to do that. I mean, now we've got different materials going in between. You're looking at, you know, 15 feet or so mm -hmm. in between the side pillars. Mm -hmm. Even if you put like a hardy plank on there, it's right. going to hold the paint better. You know, you might still have to scrape and paint the, you know, the semi-verticals semi -verticals on there, but there's other alternatives now as opposed to just regular old vinyl side. Right, exactly. It's so, going to hold paint. So what we need to do is, uh, at the fall town meeting, uh, put an article on, get some money. And it, 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 it would be nice to see if CBA would take on a project like that. How much did it cost last time you painted it? Oh, oh God, that was back in, what, late 80s. There's still lead paint there, and that's so. That's the other thing we've got to deal with. Is yeah. that's so that was like sixty or eighty thousand. I can't even remember. I wasn't working here then. But well, a bunch of the interior has been de, de leaded and de. How's that? There's no lead in the interior. Right. The, the asbestos was taken out. We did the floors. The asbestos floors yeah. are out. So the only thing left is the, the lead on the outside. Well, and the windows now. But the windows are shot. We, windows are shot. Did we shot. do this? So we can use windows two times on that building on the outside. It was chemically. Not chemically stripped; it was chemically, like, peeled. Yeah. I've had it shot. The building's hot. I know, but uh, I'm just. Well, if you remove it, I'm thinking back when Donald Pip was on there. Remember, he had a, at well, he not personally, but when he was there, they had the town hall paint, and then so many years later, it was peeling again, and oh, it wasn't done right. There's still lead paint, so we got to do all this lead stuff, and now there's lead again. There's, they never took it all off. I know, but why are we doing that? And people are at town meeting. Now, I'm not the oldest guy in town, where I remember these town meetings and these same conversations, and yeah. we did it wrong, do you, do you, let's do it again. We did it wrong, now we're going to go back you know, and Part of that is because you don't hire a professional and pay them the right way to tell them what to do. Well, we did We did the North Hadley Hall. They did. That was the same company. It was the same both. company that stripped the... Washed it all down into the pond, there. and then we had to dig up the dirt on other people's property. Yeah. What a disaster that was. That was awful. Um, My recommendation would be just take, take the siding off, 
put some hardy pine. I agree with that, yes. And paint it. And Thank scrape you. down the, the verticals and the trim and paint. Now, yeah, the windows, it, it, the windows definitely need to be upgraded. Well, do you think changed. that will go for the end? Why don't you pull that, those verticals off? And put, I mean, why don't you just pull them off and replace them with something better? Why would why leave the lead there? I mean, you could they strip it all the way down, but I mean, I don't know. That, that's you have to burn it off almost. You, you can't burn lead. No. If you're putting in new windows, you need to take the verticals off anyway. The verticals don't run with the windows. No, they're, oh, they're between. But they can be replaced too with the new. You could product. use the hardy, yeah, the hardy sure. board to replace yeah. those. You're right. They have verticals. I mean, it, it would make sense. The, the interior is then completely decontaminated. Right. The, the, the problem is, though, never and, and we don't open again. the windows now for a reason, obviously. Well, one, they don't really open. Two, it's a climate controlled building. But the storms are falling off. The window, the glazings are gone. Some of those have asbestos in them. And you sure as heck don't want to be opening up the windows and letting all that dust, lead dust and everything blow into the place you just I mean, it's a, decontaminated. It's a, you know, a good bunch of money. That it would be, yeah. But that's, what I mean, your heating system's decent in there. Your air conditioning system's decent in there. You've, like you said, we've cleaned up the interior. It's still 1960s paneling, but, um, you know, it's, it's clean, it's decent. But you're right, the outsides, I can't see just like scraping it and painting it again. I think we ought to put a product on. Okay, okay, so, so I the end result is we don't have money no, for no. anybody to come up with specs on this or ideas. Is that right? Not well, we've exhausted that line item. But I'm wondering if there's some money that we could, from some other line item, like the select board OPM services. And we, you got $28,000 left in that account. Is that well, something that the one that pays a lawyer then? <laughs> you know, we got to look at those things. Is there another place that we could get? I don't know why that's still in there and if that's really up to date or not. You know, I, have we get five we I have a feeling we don't have an OPM account. Right, the OPMs are those are gone. They're in the building accounts if they exist. Yeah. It might have been taken out since I got this. I but, think so. You know, if we could get five thousand dollars, we could so. start that type of project. Yeah. Okay. No, I, what? What did you say? I said I, one of the OPMs was exhausted. That they ran I, out of money. I think, yeah, that was the library was yeah. exhausted. The senior, senior center, center was extra. right, but I don't know if that's still. I don't know what he's looking at. We had extra money. Well, this is what I was fire department had extra. Uh, it, was, it could be. Okay. It could be a couple budget. months ago. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this was. We have the budget. This was printed in December. Return. This was printed in December. Select board OPM services. Yeah, we've got a new one now. Twenty-eight thousand left. Yeah. Well, maybe there that might be was some meeting sixteen. Certainly now. So that might be it because underneath it's the senior center, senior center additional funding. I don't know if they are. That could be the OPM money from the senior center because it's in that same column. Should be out of there though because we don't. But this was from December. Right, that's what I'm saying. It so should be probably, out of there. Linda's probably, probably out, out now. now. I can't so, I mean, that's something we need to look at. You're absolutely right. Yes, yeah, if we're not going to do the okay. columns, and it's it's just you know. Well, I think I think we should do the columns. Yeah. The columns need to be done, and that's not. And it's a lot more art than. But it's still going to take a year before you even get to it. Now. Well, who knows? I mean, you should go out to bid. We should get it out to bid. We've got the money now. We've gone this far. We need to put it. Let's have a lawyer uh, go back tomorrow. Right. Let's tell him to have the lawyer take a look at that. Right. We need to get that bid. straightened out. This has gone on for almost three years now. Okay. So the columns is one thing. The other thing is find some money for design and painting or replacing. Probably replacing it would make a lot more sense. Do a do a fix that's going to actually last. So we're not here more again. Before. Yeah. Right. We don't want to go to too many town meetings, listen to the same argument. <laughs> so one of, one of the things you should just say to people is that we have seen a party board on this building and they don't know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So they can actually physically come over and look at it, touch it, see what they're looking at, yep. instead of some concept that many people won't have. I think we have it on the fire station, don't we? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it, it certainly, you know, when when conversation comes up at town meeting, 
there's nothing wrong with bringing a regular wooden siding painted, hardy board painted, vinyl painted. But people, as they walk in, touch the stuff and say, oh, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, this way there's some education going instead of just mm -hmm. talk. Yeah. And Physical. showing pictures of the buildings that already have it in town. Mm -hmm. Right. And you know, it's I hear all the time, you can't put a metal roof, it's going to, you can't put gutters on a metal roof, it's going to tear them off. Well, we had them on the hooker school, and we had them on the garage, and we've got them on all the other buildings. Mm -hmm. You put the snow bars up and the fingers on them, and guess what? Yeah. They work. You know, it's not like you've got to put something to stop the snow from sliding off and taking them off, but yes, you can do it, and it works. So the other part of that is, <coughs> you know, the, the windows are... The windows are nearly should be done original also. equipment that should be done along with that siding, which I escalates, agree with you. escalates the that's price. Gonna, yeah, that's going to double it from But even so, it's foolish to go and put on new siding. Right, and, and, trim around. Around. and I did notice today and you know the, the metal that they put over the top of the windows oh, some, the, it, those are starting to come apart they're starting to rot so that needs to be when you're doing the siding those need to be readdressed they did well that if that's they leaking did, and starting to rot it's not going to be long before you before it starts it running into stuff. the windows mm -hmm. and the guy did that front shelf on the entryway when they did the roof they bent some metal and slapped it up there for us so, you know, yeah, to protect we don't have to No, they all knew they put it up there. With windows, you don't have to go with a wooden million dollar window. You could go with good quality the, vinyl that right. looks, looks like what you have. It will also be energy efficient. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. And I try, we're, we're dealing with two energy surveys right now mm -hmm. going so through the same people. When the time gets the green energy certificate, it will get money. It can be used towards things like better windows for buildings that need them. But most of those guys, most of our buildings, <coughs> since now since we have three new ones, most of them aren't going to come close to qualifying for the for their upgrades. They're looking at a couple of them that are still left. The, the guy I just sent him the things. He's going to try to. I keep asking the guy, "What about windows? That's the biggest heat loss." The electric company is not going to cop <coughs> the windows because they'll never get their money back. You know what, the uh, town hall windows are a single pane glass? Oh, yeah. All right, so, like a Mass Save, they won't even talk to you unless no. they're single pane. But I don't know if Mass Save will even. <coughs> no, but, but basically, what it shows if Mass Save won't pay to uh, replace the double pane, the payback is so long they don't care about it. <coughs> single pane, they know it's worth at least giving you an interest free loan. Right. You know, so, um, not that the town is going to get a loan or whatnot. I mean, those guys agree it is the biggest heat loss. Yeah, there's less, energy but, savings if it's. But since it's funded loss. basically by the power company, which our rates are going to go up to pay for all the stuff they're doing for us. So. Well, hey, I'm using it on a project of my own because I've already paid all that money in through my electric bills. Yeah, I mean, I just had I got a rebate on my split units I put in. Yeah, those rebates are going off the hook. Are they? What's Dan Terry going to come to uh, asking us tomorrow for us to make a list of um, things that we need, what we need <laughs> done in town? Good, we'll take it. Yeah. Well, he's already given us 100000 towards the trailers. Yeah. But then he's out the agenda the, for... Uh, well, ARPA money or whatever it is. Some is ARPA, some is... Oh. Well, one, one of the things money. Um, is the highway department the exterior certainly needs a paint job. And when I brought this up last fall, I think uh, Gary and Tim said it was probably the original paint job on that building. So it held up 60 years. What's the matter with that? Yeah, that's it's still good actually, yet. And the acid's pretty good. All right, but, so I, on that theory, I did have it tested. It's not lead. Okay. Okay, which I didn't think it would be, but I, that was good. So that's tested. It's not lead. I did get a quote on pointing before we paint. That's obviously the first thing you do. Quote was nine thousand, so you got to figure at least ten or more now. Yeah. So that's got to be done first, and I have a feeling paint to paint that building is not going to be cheap paint either. No. But you know, you th you think about it, the building is. It does need to be done. In the early seventies, that thing was done. We've and done everything, but paint and repoint it. Repoint it. That puts the building together where water's not getting in there and breaking things apart. Give it a paint job. No, it wasn't the, the water that was breaking it. Well, I understand there's a couple of loaders, but um, 
<laughs> but are there still, still a couple of big cracks in that? Oh, there's yeah. some big cracks and there's some small cracks. And we've had, since I've been here, we've done brand new thermal pane windows, brand new electrical panel. We've added another waste oil heater. I think we only burn like maybe 800 to 1,000, 800 gallons, I think, of number two in that building. So we've added the, the windows, electrical panel, insulation in the attic, the metal roof. We put the, the gable ends in metal. Yeah. You know, there's really about the only thing left is a good repoint and paint. Repoint paint. We've even changed out the garage doors too yeah. with insulated. And it's not where anybody sees it, but the point is it's we're, here, we're here to maintain the building. So I'd rather go and start, you know, doing a repointing job and a paint job when it where it's maybe fifty thousand dollars. Well, right before you're a hundred thousand before you're taking down. a wall apart and rebuilding exactly. it. Exactly. So okay, Google, tell the bad leak dot org. So, anyways, that's my thoughts on that building as well. Yeah, that, I mean, I did do some due diligence. Of course. So, what happened with the trailers got replaced? Are they getting replaced? Or they're still. <laughs> We keep changing our minds, but right now we are going to replace the worst small brake trailer, and the plan is to put new windows in the other trailers and new carpet and split units. You pull the carpet up? Yeah, I mean I have it, but the carpet you trip over, so it's it's not mold on any. So there's that there is floor under there. Oh, oh, thing's solid. It is. Oh yeah. Right. Is one of them disappearing? Yep. I thought. Um, Replace one and remodel. Richland, no, no, no. We're, we're down to replace the brake one and remodel the other the two. two. Okay. Meaning, put once they put windows in one, they didn't put them in a flasher, right? Plus, they were the slides this way. Mm -hmm. So, I'm putting the air conditioner in, you got to build a frame and hold it up, and then that ruins the stuff. So, we're looking at Tim. We're going to go with the swing out windows, so that awning windows. Awning windows, so that you can. Get them a little bit smaller, flash around them the proper way with the metal that's on the side. And put a window unit in there? And then, and then put some <coughs> mini splits and put mini one splits. unit that will fire three of the, the trailers so we don't have to put cob in window units. Yeah. That and, makes sense. Sense. and then put some carpet squares down on the floor so you're not tripping over the wall to wall carpet that's in the trips. In the trips. Lipstick on the paint. Yeah. But I mean, the trailers were not really. I mean, I don't know, it was the trailers were not? I didn't think that bad to like change 20 years, up. Twenty years old now, aren't they? Oh, they've been there for twenty years, and they were used then. So they're twenty, at least, at least twenty years old. Um, so the problem is, is all the work to take the old ones out and put the new ones back. Because we're all connected up. Yeah. Two of them got to have all plumbing. Yeah. And you got to pull all the electrical out of them and all the burg and fire. So right. you put it all back in. Isn't that a company that comes in? No, the company puts the trailers in place. Yeah. Right you have to think you just connect everything and then you have plumbers hook the wires up and the plumbing up and the. Well, but even so, it's easier than And then you got to move the furniture yeah. out and get rid of them. Okay. Yeah, I know, but that's what I mentioned. Sure. No, there's always furniture, there's always a subcontractor. Yeah. Well, the problem is that you know, we're not paying the money. Where are we going to put it? You know, I was going to move it out, have somebody move it out, store it, get the new ones in place, bring the stuff back. And you're not going to leave it outside in the salt shed, right? Leave the truck outside during the renovation. Should we furniture in here? Chase some money for the money might be out of town. Should we try to get that on a zoom in? The fall warrant? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, you know, I Carolyn asked what we had for projects going, do we really need an on-call consultant? I don't think we need a consultant for that, do we? Not for the, yeah. not for the point yeah. of, well, unless, I mean, we'll just figure out some good quality paint, that's all we need, but, um. So the only other thing I was, was asked to bring up was like with the uh, public safety bill. Postpone it until Back in the DRA report and a few others, there was no, I mean, the concept of make a decision. Uh, infilling. You stay if you're looking at the front of the building, the you got uh, 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 the offices, and then the bays over here, there's a little bump in there. Um, and the reports all always showed that as an infill, either one story or two story. 
So the fire chief has asked us to look at that a little bit more and see if if that's something that's that his priority over windows and siding on that building now. Just <laughs> bringing up what, what was. What does asked. he want? Another Sorry. addition. An the, addition. That infill in the front. Oh. Uh, between a place, are, be, between a police and the fire. Yeah, the, you're not set back all the way there. In the front. And what what is that going to be? Office space for the fire department? Well, um, the first there were several concepts, but the first was one of the uh, ideas was to put um, dis uh, the dispatch. God, that'd be a pain to move all that. I'm just saying maybe right more here. offices. They're they're running out of like yeah. You know they're getting. And the hurt. other one was offices, and the second floor would be some more. Um, do they call do they call those day rooms for the um, ambulance drivers and stuff? They're in the back there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we built the back. So in the back. he just asked us to. Well, I know he, I know he's been asking about, and the windows are terrible there, and so. But yes, side. with that would be. It's about the time that we got to do new windows and siding on that. I wasn't on that building committee. Me neither. <laughs> so either way, he has, I'm sure he has reasons why he wants that. Yes. But before we even um, ask for money for design, we need to know the reasons. Exactly. And that's something that we can, we can partake and see what their thoughts are. And it's like, should maybe the um, selectman, shouldn't he be going to the selectman and say, look, I need this many square feet about for this before we waste money on design? We're not, we're not going. Should, you know, I, I don't know what, what the right his rule is. So bring it back to the old fire station on West Street, show them where it came from. Yeah. <laughs> but the choice would, you know, if, if let's say Mike wants an addition for whatever it is, we built the Instead of coming to us and saying, I want this and design something for me, I would think he needs to come to your board first, explain, no. I need this and can we have them spend money for design? David, please, I, no. you haven't let me finish. I've okay. tried to finish three times already. He's asking us to look at it to see if we feel that it would be something that the town should go forward with. He's not talking about design. He's talking for our input with regard to the building, if it is something that's feasible and would be worthwhile to pursue. Nothing to go off to design with. Well, it's just, should should that be looked at? So, we want him, so we, he wants to bring the building forward and yes, take away the, in, por the covered porch? No, no, in between. The covered porch. Oh, in, in the between. garage. There's oh, a okay. setback. Yes. In that little Wait, empty space. Yes. In that empty space. Probably green space. And the reason he's hand. bringing that up is <laughs> if we decide to side the building and put new windows in, why would we want to side an area that we're going to take apart? Oh, yeah. Great. That's all it is. Well, and I think that's a legitimate The way question. that roof comes in on the back, I don't think you could go a full two stories without. Going into that roof in the back, the, you know. The, That's exactly right. And the other thing is, even though the Mike already got his addition, it's up in so. North Hadley, and I'll tell him myself. The DPW needs an addition first. <laughs> I think I, that I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, what I'm saying is, all departments have the right to ask, oh, I know. and he's asking, mm -hmm. and I think his it's legitimate for him to say, hey. Is this something that we really should look at for the future and think about it before we go ahead and reside and put new windows in where we're going to be taking taking siding off and no, that, that taking side actually off. has that's we, it. We recited that because it was coming up, and we already just fixed what this was coming up. Oh, okay. Like the I don't have a like that the was the worst siding we ever footage. put on. Added. It was yeah, the cheapest. It's all really crowded down there, but it's more crowded than the building. highway garage. I mean, you, you get yeah. a. You know everybody, there. there's a couple still. Yeah, they need one, yeah. and we don't need one too. It's who needs one more? There's very few windows on that side that you would. I mean, I'm just saying, you could go ahead and replace the windows and the siding, and not really. You could even leave that part out. I think but, even this is going to be my take on it because you start asking the people. 
to do an addition on this Center Street building, and Center building. I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> and they're gonna say, you have the option right. of fixing this place here instead of putting up that new building in North yeah. Alley. I agree. So, I mean, I'm not it's saying that- be. Huh? I, you're absolutely right. But I can see where they do need the space. Right. I mean, that's, that's, and and, and that's he's legit in asking, but I think yeah. is, if we gotta look at this as a priority list or whatever, the DPW needs an addition. And that's exactly what we did the first year. Absolutely. We all we came up with the, and prioritized and, them. Yeah. And it was safety first. And and safety first. And we, and yeah. it, and 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 the, there wasn't always an agreement right. with other departments that our priority was right. what we're going. But that was what we decided. I but the we, DPW was before the library. That got it bumped. very well and, be that yeah. we will prioritize DPW. Well, I think they need their buildings. That's that's a shame down there. Yeah, I'll second that. I mean, that. the building is the building is up to date, but it's out of size. It's yeah. it's not enough size. I mean, we can't. Yeah. You know, we need a truck wash down there. The DEP is going to really start clamping down on. Yeah, it's really some stuff it, You get buying new trucks just because you can't wash them. They rot before you can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you do your best, but you're you know legally it's 24 hours after a storm. But if it's and and there's zero, you're not washing trucks outside. Right. There is a concept out there on how to add on. Um, now that well, the, they're now doing is there's a survey being done right now. We, they Carolyn got mm -hmm. I don't know how much money it was, but we did go down there and they met with everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I told the guy it's hard, you know. I said I don't envy the guy. I'm trying to design something for ten years down the road when you don't know what new codes and stuff are going to be. You know, you're no, going to have to climb events for every truck. I think truck we're very in there. limited on space down there, and yes. because it sits on top of the sewer. Well, right. That's so we yeah. can't go back. And we're we're, we, now we're actually outgrowing the sewer area because of what we have to truck out of there. Well, um, the sewer can go back if they decide yeah. to do that. They left room and they can go to the side. We, the first design years ago, and I think you were on that committee, was to go off south. Mm -hmm. But they just put the new fuel pumps in. Right. Well, now we're at the point where the fuel pumps are about ready to come out. Yeah. So. That's not an issue anymore. Well, George, you're absolutely right. I mean, before we, in my opinion, before we even think about DPW, we really need to update what should be done with the sewer plant. And luckily, from way back when, 20 plus odd years, when mm -hmm. we first did that first study mm -hmm. on how to increase that, till now, things have gotten so small, they said, oh, there won't be a problem with your footprint to add on what we need. But I think it's something that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. We need to have a real good plan on how that would be before we actually mm -hmm. go forward. But yes, the the concept and the easiest concept to add on to DBW is go off as, make it almost like a T going south where the uh, fuel pumps are. Just go that way. The guys would come in around from the north side the east side and come on in pointing west and the the trucks would come in from the east side and just drive out to the west side and now you don't have the backing up and all the all the problems that we're, we see down there yeah and that could be very simple it's it's not a very expensive addition and I, I will say good. since our first tour many how many years ago was that well, the first tour is where, eight years you ago. Know, where you're going in with a plow and picking it up over a truck and dropping it down with a backhoe. We have cleared out a lot of stuff in there, and we've got it so now during a storm. I mean, it's very, very tight, but, you know, there's still stuff, some stuff sitting outside. But, you know, we've gotten rid of some of the junk, and you've kind of remodeled a little bit and I get stuff all, around. It's, I, it's any time I've been of, over there for a tour, Everything has been, and I can't, I don't, for the life of me, I can't understand how you got that Jenga puzzle together. How do you put all that stuff in that little tiny building? The, yeah, the it, DBW is long overdue for renovation. If everything's out of there, it takes, you know, three or four guys, you know, some time to back everything in and get it out of far enough. The hardest working aspect of this whole town is this DPW crew. Mm -hmm. And they really, really deserve, you know, an upgrade down there. In the biggest way. Well, let's. We should get something on um, the sewer plant before we, we might do. even yeah, you know, get some money for that. You know, yeah. I mean, when you're thinking about what other towns do, I mean, Hatfield got a whole shitload of money to put sewer in throughout their whole town almost. 
over there. And they were a lot further spread out than we are here. I think are pretty well close to what our radius is on on, uh, on, on where we go. And almost everybody got put on sewer. Well, that's all a problem here in town. Mm -hmm. But they have to expand their, their plant. Right. I mean, yeah, that's one thing I did tell the people that were doing that last survey. I mean, you, you can't go back. You, you know, this, this, the highway piggybacked onto the sewer land. That land was designed. I mean, now you're, you know, the other choice is do you build somewhere else, a new mm -hmm. department? So we have a few future projects that we can start looking at. But um, I think, I think one of them, you know, of course we're too late for this morning, but I'd like, I think our big one is we should, we need to get some money into an on-call consultant thing so that we don't get burned by, I mean, I've seen too many projects I'm trying to correct that we didn't have somebody design it, like the heating system at the town hall. That could have been 10 times mm -hmm. better. Yeah, Larry's helped us out quite a bit over the past And year. I, you know, when you say $50,000 spread out over eight or nine years and all of these projects, it's not, you know, you really have nothing to do with these big well projects. Yes. Yeah. And it saved the town Weird. on, yeah. you know, callbacks well, and... Let me ask tomorrow night if anything is left in the budget that we could take and, and put into this. And any amount or, would be... I mean, for now, it. just a couple of projects Yeah. yeah. get us just to get the fall to town meeting with so some numbers. So we can at least get to the to fall and they put, we'll put some, some of that. Would, I think definitely for the fall town meeting, that needs to be we'll put it There still article. was some money left over from North Hadley Hall there, even though we had to pay off that goober, but... Um, and that's including the lawyer's fees? Yeah. Oh. So... If there's some there, maybe we could nab on to that. But uh, I'll only ask. I'll so whatever it. happened with the insulation in the Sally Port ceiling, did it ever get done? Okay. Um, we revisited it. We've come up with what we think is going to be a plan because of the way it was built. If we can't fill the void. Uh, was, you were there, right? Yeah. Yeah, and we've come up with a price. Uh, of course, the price is only good for 10 days. But I think now that... The weather's getting warmer. What they're going to do is cut. We're going to cut two channels in. They're going to go in and blow it in, and then patch it up. And we've got the money for the two new doors. So it's a for the police station. Yeah, that's with Sally Port because there's no insulation between the Sally Port garage and the offices above, including the 21 inches in the north wall. But we have, we have that budget, and we had some money for that. Didn't there's we? money for that. Yes, and there's yes, we money have, enough we for. We need to add to it. No. No. So do you have, um, does it have to go with the contract or you already got a contract? I, we've gotten prices, I mean, of course, it, it's around, I think they put there, was it 10? If it's under so 10, we don't need, it's around 10, you don't need to go up to bid. I think if it's even up to that, I got to get three prices. Right. So I mean, the problem with these guys. You have to ask for three, three. until you ask, if they don't respond. Right, yeah. right. So that's something that's going to happen this spring? Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a, yeah, that's another thing that you know, we've talked about since I've been here. Right. Well, you know, it's one of those projects where we started, we had the guys come out and COVID hit. Nobody could go into the police station for that. You've know. Huh. You know, been sitting two years. Yeah. Um, it's not something you don't want to do in the middle of winter either because you open yeah. up the north doors. It gets, you know, Mike freezes, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Municipal Building Committee is on it's like your agenda for yes. tomorrow. It's tomorrow on the night. agenda, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's a Zoom meeting. Yes. So um, Gary and I were going to go be on Zoom. You certainly, guys, if you want to be. That was what, mostly for the trailer and the update on the good one in the columns? Is what you yes, this is what I might be on a job site, but I'll, uh, I'll mute. Uh, and uh, I, I see that's pretty far down the list. I have to be at the ZBA meeting tomorrow. It's and I think that's going to be pretty six. quick. It starts at seven, right? I thought yeah. Carolyn said that. Oh, I thought she said your meeting started at six thirty, and she we tried to get us six. on early. We started at six. Oh, well, you start at six. Holy cow! Where are you at? All right. Yeah, we're we're six. I I, but I'll I'll text David. Um, he's I I got to yeah, be on moves, Zoom at seven fifteen. He moves things around, and he can turn. Yeah, me. I'll just tell him. Hey, I got to be at ZBA. Zoom at seven fifteen. So, squeak squeak us in early. 
Yeah, I didn't realize either what's on our agenda tomorrow night, too. But it's going to be a half an hour before. We're at well, six and at seven. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, you, you mean at what? We at, we're at six, CBA's at seven. Right. We're so at six. You meet at six, CBA's, uh, I'm going to be on at 7.15. So, there's for CBA. Zoom also. I'm sorry? They're off of Zoom? Are they, Are they also, also Zoom? on Zoom? Yes. Well, you just get another TV, you'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I'm lucky I got one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Should I check with Carolyn to see if she can give us a time tomorrow? Or yeah. yeah, you can call her tomorrow. Yeah, all right. Or David does the agenda, you can yeah, ask. Yeah, just tell him. Oh, all right. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. I'll text him. Tell him Tim needs to be on early. You do that? Yeah, yeah I'll okay. do that. Set a time. This, um... Does anybody else want to talk about anything? No. Yes. I think the Municipal Building Committee should also advocate for money to maintain our new buildings properly. Yeah, whatever happened with that? Does anybody at the Senior Center, is there anybody here on site, on staff, uh, keeping track of, of maintenance records so we have some idea of what we're going to spend in the future? Okay. Uh, I claim up with... I was told to get realistic numbers. Well, it's hard to get realistic numbers when you haven't only run the building at one right. year at half capacity. Right. So I found a formula online based on square footage of a building, what you should spend for maintenance. It was like a dollar sixty-eight or something like that per square foot. I ran the numbers and other than the public safety complex, which was pretty close to it, but I think that should have been adjusted because it's a 320, you know, 24-7 right. building. Right, right. We are way off on this. Prime example is this money, we did move some money around when we met, we found some little bit of extra money, but it all, overall it's all one pile. We can take from one to the other for buildings. You know, we're, we're not, we still don't have enough to do what you should be doing to keep them up. The prime example was we had 5,500 for this building. It's the same we've had for the last 10 years at Russell's. 5,500 per? For the, for the year. For the year. For the Hooker School. That's what we had for wow, here. Wow, that's, that's not enough. That's the HVAC contract and the sliding door contract. Exactly, that's what it costs yeah. for this building. You know, we have a contract for the library. Well, so, what, what's so, happening for janitorial? Right now we have a contract with a cleaner that cleans. Are they doing okay? Yeah, but how often do how often they come in? Okay. Uh, Twice town a week hall, for a couple of hours. Town hall once. Twice a week for a couple hours? It's not enough. Town hall a full one, one night, and a half of one on a weekend. What about, uh, you know, sprinkler maintenance, stuff like that? Spanky does all of the sprinkler maintenance, inspections, that's all in his budget. And the fire. in his budget. The generators in his budget, and the fire alarm systems are in his fire budget. Okay, so that's not. Yeah. And, and the fiber optic, when it happens, will be his. But I'm, I'm right. thinking more general maintenance, you know, like a light, light bulb goes out, maybe they call you. Um, and when the place needs to be vacuumed, or ba uh, bathrooms, and even during a snowstorm, shoveling so many feet outside each door. It's all um, VPW right now. That's another problem. We do all of the roads. Yeah. Okay, um, so you know, you're gonna do all the roads, you're gonna do all the school parking lots. Then you move over to the town hall, senior center parking lot. You know, if the school ends at three, four in the morning and you get done plowing the roads at seven or eight o'clock in the morning, you're not gonna get over here until after everything's plowed. You're not, you know, we so don't that, have the that's, that's like at the university, a janitor would do the steps of right. uh, every, whatever building they're assigned to is so many feet out. That's why I think with the amount of buildings that have, especially new buildings now, they can go to fire stations, both of them, and you know all these buildings. One or maybe the town should think about hiring a couple of I call the maintainers, um, basically do janitorial work, change light bulbs, we need do a little in paint. Maintainers instead of contracted out. Right. And, but, some, and somebody who can do that. We bought for the building. We have a snowblower to make that efficient. But the problem is, you, need somebody to run it. you you hire employees. If there's not somebody to keep them going, you know they may be the greatest candidate now. But after a while, 
you are sleeping in a janitor's closet, hiding out here and there, and it can be a waste of money too. Um, you need somebody. To move we, these we, we've all. talked about, you know, we've came from the first contract we wrote up. We tried to get it, you know, obviously, the better service costs more money. And when the bids come back not enough, then you go with the lower qualified or whatever. Same with, we've been trying to get the parking lots and the sidewalks and stuff contracted out by a contractor or a landscaper or somebody that comes in. So now, stop snowing, we're cleaning up the roads, they're here cleaning up the stuff, everybody can open once the roads are open. And I just interject, David said you can go on like between like, after two appointments between 620, 6.30. That's fine. Tim, does that work for you? 6.20, 6.30? Tomorrow? Select board. Select yeah, board. That'll work. Okay. 6.30? Yeah. 6.20. So, I'll be at your house. At there's two appointments um, <clears throat> before that. That's all. So it seems we have some idea of what we need, but not, not a clear p picture yet because we haven't had a full year of 100% You know, the problem is when you're working with X amount of dollars and you're going over to get anything else, you're not going to be able to, you know, other than blowing the crap out of a budget, you can't go and throwing everything right. that you need done and then say, oh, look, yeah, I showed you what you needed to do. Right. Now pay for it. Yeah. But I, I think I agree with you that the town should be funding the maintenance of the building. Otherwise, you get North Hadley Halls and... Russell exactly. School. Right. I so, mean, the, the safety complex on East Street is a prime example. Right. But that guy is not, whoever you hire, is not going to be painting the outside. Of the no, building. no, and I'm not, you're, you're right. You're talking about cleaning, A general shoveling. maintenance person. I'm talking yeah. about the guy who's going to scrub the carpet, scrub the dining room floor with a scrubber. Change the light change bulbs. Change the light bulbs. Fix the clock, about, stuff like that. Yeah. If you need so pictures or a bulletin board hung up, right. they can do that. So, um, I agree. Where as a town foolish, I mean, not the now. school. I don't know. I've but again, it. if you don't have somebody to keep them going, a good human resource or a good manager that's going to make sure we got people that are actually working, not becoming so-called state employees, which I was my whole life. <laughs> but being compliant. <laughs> yeah, we got. You know, you, you really want to get your value out of it, and we yeah. don't have to go and and be pushing people where it's not a good place to work. But we don't right. want a bunch of fakers either, because right. you know how it goes. You hire somebody, you can't get rid of them because union or you know you're not being nice. Well, to I'll them. tell you what. When I was on school committee and we went to build a new addition for the junior high, the SB built, uh, state school building committee told us they said no because we kept our buildings in too good condition. Yes, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> and Hopkins was always kept. Um, Pristine. I mean, it really, we had the best janitors over there. But, really but I can say that's separate yeah. from the select board of what happens in this town. Yeah. Unlike right. the rest of the buildings. Right. They, they, they run on their the own. The school has system. their own rules and they have their own a lot of different ones that I don't have to follow and it would be a lot nicer if I didn't have to follow them. <laughs> well, you know, but you can't combine and I think that's just um, an example of well, you're right, what we should actually do. At one time, I think they had, what, six side. or seven janitors plus part-time summer help for two buildings. But they didn't. They didn't when I was on school committee. Right. They didn't have but at that one point, they people, did have that. And they were able to maintain them. Right. Excellent. We have... So they had people that cared. How yeah. Uh, well, that's... They were, and that's... But that was years ago. That's yeah. exactly... That was back when <laughs> <back, laughs> people had I mean, work ethic. Right. If somebody has a building and they feel it's theirs and their responsibility... Yeah, that's right. They, they knew that it was theirs, yeah. And they care about it, and they will give more than... But if you hire somebody... You should have gave me keys to the Russell School a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you the Russell School. You should have asked for them. We'll oh, give it to see you. what they're going to charge you. A dollar? <laughs> a dollar? <laughs> I'll, give them, I'll give the dollar for you. But, but Joyce, that's just something I guess more your board needs to come up with. Do we want to fund two positions, say, um, to maintain these buildings and to come up? You know, maybe we could come up with a list of jobs that we, you know, to try to make a. Um, I don't think list. we need a maintenance. At the North Hadley building. Uh, well, they, you don't need they, the plowing? I mean, well, somebody who could move from building to building. In they, the, they should have somebody cleaning. You, the peop, you, right, nobody's budgeted up there. We have a, Right. But all, all town buildings. There's no re not just this building. Right. I'm saying the two people, they can move from here right. to there to there, right. North Hadley Hall. 
Yeah. You know, no, no, the, no, the, the, fire not, uh, the fire station. Correct. There's, um, it's not like there's not a vehicle where they can't use something yeah. to get up there. Well, that's where you, you know? invest in people and you hire full-time employees and you give them benefits and hopefully they'll do the job right. that they'll want to do. When you only hire part-time per diem people to come in and sweep a broom or do whatever, clean a bathroom, it's, they're not really being invested in the building itself. Right. The problem uh, we, is nobody wants to put out extra taxes to pay for them. We have nine, well, nine that's, buildings. That's so. an HR thing. And I think that's something that we really could bring to You know, there's the nine buildings with no janitor, and the school has two. I, I, somebody said they're down to three or four now, but I don't know. Well, you know, we talked about this a year or two ago about janitorial staff, maintenance staff for these new buildings. Um, it's not a new idea. No. And granted, I'm one of those taxpayers that don't want to spend any extra money on taxes, but in the long run, you'll spend more right. money by not being You're absolutely today. right, and that's so, what we've got to get across. Uh, so I also had a conversation today with Carolyn about the cleaning person, and that's going out to look for it as a paid town position, because what, it would be less paying someone $20 an hour, 37 and a half hours a week, plus benefits, than we are currently paying the person who's cleaning the buildings. Right, and, it, and that makes sense, as long as we end up with a good employee that exactly. actually does I any think, work I think that you don't get stuck with. Be right, you need two. Yeah, one is better two. than There's nine. Well, when you one person's two. on vacation or sick. But one person can't take two. care of all these. No, there's nine properly. buildings. That's too much. I mean, let's, Although let's right now we realistic. have one person no, who's trying to clean helpers. all the buildings, and it's not happening. She has helpers. Yeah. <laughs> But so, I mean, that's what we need to look at, and that's where HR comes in, and whether they feel, you know, those two people that they hire, they have to have some background and have to have background and, and history. Yeah, the good, his, we, the we good work history. Just taking the first schlep off the street. Yeah. And sometimes you could get retirees. You know, you say, "Well, part time is not a good deal," but a lot of people are retiring so-called early mm -hmm. and want to work. And some of those people are the best employees because they Except actually they want to come. Here, to then they want to play. What's that? <laughs> Except when they get here, then they want to play. Well, then <laughs> you say, "See you later." <laughs> well, I mean, that's something I think we definitely yeah. need to look at. I mean, you know, like you said, we've we've talked about this before. I mean, and we're not doing it so much now, but like I can remember the Hooker School. They had they would rent it out. They get twenty five bucks a night for a meeting. Mm -hmm. It wasn't enough to cover the lights and the heat. Or the toilet paper. Or the toilet paper. Or the mess. Never mind. Nobody checked the place after. You know, okay. and if it snowed that night on the way out and somebody slipped and fell, there was nobody, you know, like he said, scraping the snow and throwing some salt down. Yeah. Now you go to the school, the elementary school, even if Park and Rec rents it, they have to pay the janitor right. to be there Comes out and clean up. So when they leave, the toilets aren't running and there's not water on the floor ruining it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I got it. And you cover, that, I, you cover that cost. And I don't think this is under the purview of the Municipal Building Committee. No. I think it's under our purview yeah. as a select board to be the advocates and bringing this forward as right. this is what we want. As I a agree with board. that, but I also think we can have backup from the Municipal Building Committee saying we have seen what's happened yeah. to other buildings and we don't want it to happen to but our I, new buildings. I think you see that you do have to back up yeah. right. our conversation. Not one person here. But you need to be vocal. Well, we can. <laughs> I, I agree with you on, you know, you need positions. And you need, to talk, you need to talk to your neighbors and say, I don't want to pay more taxes either, but we're going to lose our good buildings if we're not I mean, the bu willing to public pay for what we've was a perfect example. Of, I mean, a recent mm -hmm. example. I mean, that one's 100 years old. This is 25 years old. And when you go in, it's like, uh oh, everything's got to be changed out now. It's all worn out. Where is this? The public safety complex when oh. it started. Well, because building. they didn't have good janitors there to begin with. Right. Yeah. They never cleaned that those was from the get -go. floors down there. They never stripped them, waxed them, the carpet. They, they tore it out, that put they new in. They thought they, was going to do the job, but it didn't happen. That's right. You know, it, you know now in mean, the town hall, we scrub and wax the floors once a year. By rights, it should be done twice a year. You know, spring and fall, before winter and after winter. And we started that list of what's needed and how and and how many mm -hmm. times it 
is required to do. We have, we did start that. We, we did start a whole list on every year, go through the buildings and this is what you should be looking for. Mm -hmm. And know what's bad, what's good, mm -hmm. what needs attention. We have those forms. I mean, like bases, and, there you could, you know, you could come in every year and run through and just touch up paint, mm -hmm. make it look a lot better. Mm -hmm. You know, but you got to keep up with the floors, and you got to keep up with the carpets and the tiles. Or yeah. they, it but it'd be wise it gets to, to the point where you, there's no way to have those forms. It doesn't have take long. whoever go through the buildings and check things off, and now you have a document of what's needed. And over years, I mean, you can take. Well, We've you can been also have a checklist this of what needs to be done every day, and do have them do a checklist yeah. every day too. There's a way of having, you know good help keep track of what they're doing so that you can see what they're doing. Yes. But honestly, we should have them within every single building a, a, a way for an employee to put something in and say, hey, I think this needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm. We don't even... So, yeah, well, we this. sort of do, but we do it through Gary. For instance, one of our complaints about the housekeeper is she's here over the weekend and she's here on Tuesday night, so she's been here today. Um, over the weekend was here, someone was here cleaning, and Monday morning a user came back and said there's no toilet paper in the bathrooms. Our bathrooms have double rolls of toilet paper. The two bathrooms, the two single bathrooms in the back were both void of toilet paper. Four rolls missing. How do you it must, be, must be a service thing because the people that clean the office where I work Sometimes the paper things aren't filled for wiping your hands. Yeah. Well, how well, about so that? Too. They don't do this, or there's no toilet paper there by the end of the day because they didn't put any in to go throughout the day. And is the supply on site, or yes. they bring no. it? It's here. It's here. Oh, the supply is here. They have the supply on site. I mean, it's literally right there. That's pretty pitiful. Yeah. And I noticed just now when I was in the ladies' room, yes, she put paper towels. You know, it's got a little window you can see in the box. But she didn't stack them neatly. They're stuffed in sort of sideways and all crinkled. So, so basically, you, you got a person that's half baked and they don't care. Or they're in a real hurry because you know, they because they're on contract down. and well, if I can get right. out of here in three they, hours they, instead of five, right? See ya. You know? Right, and it's I mean, there again, it's, you go back to that little bit. <laughs> you right. know, and that's you, why sometimes when you hire a person for eight hours a day, well. Maybe they'll get everything done in six or seven. And then they have time to do something that needs doing. Well, hopefully that they job. do. But at least things will get done. Well, if you keep up with the little stuff, you have time yeah. to do a little extra. Right. So, so when you talk to a select board tomorrow night, Joyce and I are behind you totally. Mm -hmm. But you could just say we are concerned about the new buildings and maintenance. And we need to, it sounds like we need to increase a, a budget for because you know, if we only have enough for sliding doors and I mean we've moved some money around we have found a couple different things but you're kind of moving it around within the whole pile so yeah you know and it, like I said I came up with a I mean it's a number that other people use as a formula mm -hmm. and I was told that you know you've got to have a realistic number it's like well I don't other short of doing everything that needs to be done and not having any money to pay anybody to do it and we get done with a bunch of IOUs Right. But you're talking maintenance contract on the mechanicals versus maintenance. Well, I'm talking, I'm talking about the budget and what you have to take out of it. So when you take out those two things and the budget's gone, it, doesn't, it leaves you nothing for it. Well, okay, so How many years on, on your, we need to paint the outside? On your contract with your cleaning people, whatever the dollar amount is, I don't know, but you're saying... $64,000. Okay, so you... Is Carolyn saying you can get a person? We can get a person for, I think we did it like for 51, which includes 25% of the wages as pennies. Okay, so there is one right. position. I agree. But already, basically it's funded. So you another, ask for more. Then you gotta go and come up with another 50,000 for the second one, if in, truly you want two people, mm -hmm. you know? But if you put the contract out to be done the way you want it, you're probably talking that anyways are close to it. So, right, maybe more. But 
Right. When we first put out the cleaning contract last year, we had uh, choice A and B about doing snow removal or and or windows as something they could include or not include. So one of the people who bid did have somebody that had made an arrangement with a local who basically lives on Middle Street who would come and do the plowing and that would be covered in her contract and we wouldn't have to worry about it. That would have been great. But there again, when you get into that kind of a thing, you've got one person subbing out and that's and they're making money on the person that's the other guy. We could go direct to get the plowing of the lots and the sidewalks done. Well, I, you can go back directly to hiring a janitor, maintenance person, and they, in their job specs, it would also include shoveling so many feet out, right, however, exactly. and even if it, during a snowstorm, you guys are on overtime, well, we may have to call in this person for an hour early to get the, the doors open. Right. Or you just don't open the doors and you say, Senior Center and library is not going to open well, until that's, that's two hours That's what we're going to do, because I mean, it takes a lot yeah. to plow off these yeah. parking lots. Everything doesn't have month. to be exactly on time. It's not mm -hmm. like the hospital where the ambulance has to back in. Mm -hmm. um, well, and the seniors aren't about to go right rushing out in the snowstorm. Exactly. Well, so, the problem um, is the minute the roads are clean, everybody thinks everything else should be open. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can get here. Why can't I get in the door? <laughs> but, but what are you doing? So, uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'll really never forget I, one of the first nights plowing snow, I went in and we just gotten in the trucks. There was, you know, maybe four or five inches of snow. And the police are calling on the radio, you haven't plowed our parking lot. We haven't left the garage yet. We haven't plowed the roads. You're worried about the parking lot? Where are you going to go if you get out of your parking lot? If you can't get out of the parking lot, the roads got the same amount of snow. Okay. Well, it's definitely something we need to jump on. Um, so, based on that, should we have another meeting next month? Can we set it up after we know, get the specs back? Do you want to have the, the specs back for the, the good one? Good one. Once we, we get that package together, weeks. we can review it. Well, that's in a couple weeks. Well, he said maybe three, if everything goes well. So today's the fifth, three is is the 26th. We can always postpone it, I guess, if you set it up, we don't have it to talk about. But I think that's something everybody should review. Why don't you the just more do May 3rd? Huh? May 3rd. May 3rd. Which would just bring us out to the next That month. should cover it. Then we might I have will not be around May 3rd, but you guys certainly should have her. a meeting without me. Are you here the 26th? Are you here the 26th? No. no. April 26th? Nope. Where are you going? What the heck? <laughs> I am finally going to have my retirement party that's two years late. <laughs> Wait a minute, I've never been at your retirement party. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> yeah. I think I was there too. Yeah. <laughs> we doing a do-over? Hmm? We doing a do-over? Yeah. Well, we haven't. We had a vacation plan because both my wife and I retired together. And my brother set up this beautiful thing for us, and it's been postponed for two years. How about the tenth? Should definitely have the stuff back by then. Tenth? He maybe be back by then. That's why I was thinking of the tenth. Tenth. Fine. Tenth. Okay. I'm not camping yet. Good. Yeah. Gene, Gene, Gene made a reservation for the thirteenth of that month oh, if we get she? the new camper. I said, and she said, we're not going if we don't have the new. <laughs> When you set up out there, can o it opens up the fifteenth. Oh, wow! So the trailer's already up there this year. You have a little bit of a trip to come to your meetings. Yeah, that's what. And that's why Zoom was Zoom, so good. <laughs> Zoom was good. <laughs> okay, the tenth we will have at seven o'clock. Yeah, that's what I told him. Not working at the office at all this summer, so. Okay. Sounds good. I like the senior center. I like it in here. So you want to have it here? Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Okay, now I'm going to make a motion to adjourn. Seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.